Hi everybody, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Hi Sewing Sisters, welcome back to the Yellow Chair. It feels like I haven't been here for ages, but um, that's because I've been doing Vlogmas. So it's more, uh, it's, I've been doing more sort of fly on the wall fil filming every day. So yeah, I haven't been sitting in the Yellow Chair, but bird is here. So I thought we could have a little look through. If you've been watching my Vlogmas, you will see that I gave everybody a, a little preview, sneaky preview, but I will go through every page now and tell you all about it. So we start off with a project for a sort of champagne cooler, which is quite a pretty idea for a little gift. Um, let's see what you make it out of. Fabric and sort of thick interfacing. Quite pretty. Then we have got a little bookmark project that you make out of leather or faux leather and you write in it with a metallic pen. Okay, I will repeat my little comment about Anne Birder. Birder magazine are obsessed with their founder and I don't know if it's her sitting in their offices in a bath chair with a tartan blanket over her legs, wheeling herself round between the desks, whacking all the interns on the ankles with a stick saying, make sure you get a mention of me in the magazine, in a German accent. Um, I'm going to look her up because she probably is. She probably has departed this life, hasn't she? Bless her. But yeah, every, <laughs> they, they managed to get a mention of her all, everywhere. Um, so yeah, little bookmark. Then we've got some little pouches, which you, would be nice in a faux suede. What have they made them out of? Velour... Hmm, be a nice little idea for scraps. Very easy, I would have thought. But my issue is, what do we do? We need these things. Like, what what would you actually do with them? I suppose if you were, if you were, if you'd made somebody some earrings, they would be a lovely little way of presenting them as a gift. Then we're on to the patterns proper, and the first one is a kind of matchy matchy mummy daughter set of a hoodie in sort of teddy bear fabric and the little girl's got a little gilet on and the woman is wearing a slip skirt it looks like it's bias cut that's got two sort of panels around the upper waist and one panel down the side and I'm, I'm not sure about it. it might be a bit of a pig to sew because if they're all bias cut and then you're cutting them diagonally as well. I imagine there'd be a lot of stretching out potential. Then we've got another kids pattern and I think this dress is absolutely beautiful and I want to try and recreate it for myself. I have seen um, a similar pattern on a sort of catwalk, catwalk photo and I shall try and pop it in there if I can find it. And I've got some almost identical sort of like very pale taupe spotty fabric. I think it would make such a cute dress. So yeah, this little dress that's like a shirt dress at the upper and then it's got an empire waist and these four tiers of ruffles, very pretty. And then I love the adult dress as well on this page. It's a pin tuck dress and I think it's really my style and it'd be very easy to fit because I imagine it's quite loose. And I've never done pin tucks before, so I've got some uh, sort of twirl fabric that I bought that's actually a bed sheet but it's really pretty and it would make a really nice wearable dress if it comes out so I think that's definitely one to go on the list. Then we've got a fitted dress which is really kind of not very imaginative. It's okay, I mean it's a really nice sort of well fitted dress but I don't think it's that different to the one that we got in last month's birder that got the sort of shape, shaped waist panel. Then we've got the joggers, which are just obligatory in every in every episode of birder. Um, and a robe pattern, which will come in really handy because I want to make Ian's mum a robe for Christmas. I need to get on with that. It's difficult because I'm getting a bit distracted with the big Ian project, which if you watch my Vlogmas, you will know all about. Then we've got a little cutie cardigan, which I imagine is very quick and easy make for kids. 
yeah I just imagine it's it's two pieces and then a band a back a front and then a band and then we got the cutest little girl's coat it's like a swing coat with raglan sleeves and it is just so lovely then the jacket that we've got is cut in the same fabric as the girl's coat and it's just a bit odd it's got this kind of revere going down to this placket I suppose it's quite unusual it's got a bit of an 80s vibe I think then we've got a really simple top which looks quite boring at first it's just a dolman sleeve top but when you look at it all the way down the sleeves it's finished with little covered buttons which has got really nice pretty detail then for the little girl we've got a dress is it made of no it's viscose that should be in a stretched fabric I think it'd be nice in a stretched jersey but it's just a little empire waist top with a like a baby doll dress that's really pretty then we've got another one I really like it's a shirt with a frilled neckline and a frilled center panel but you can't really see it on this version I'm not sure if there's another version of it further on I think there is actually where you can see the ruffles a lot better then I really like this jumper it is kind of like a um, Tilly and the Buttons Nora top with quite a wide polo neck but just like a loose t-shirt style top but it's got this these buttons all the way down the back and I think they're just a really nice detail I don't know how difficult that would be to make but I'd really like to make that as just a kind of top to wear around the house I love I put buttons on everything I just love a button placket then the uh, sewing lesson is the pin tuck dress which is really good because it means that the parts the pattern pieces will be shaded in on the pattern sheet so they'll be easier to trace out let's see there's only six pieces to it so it's not going to be a difficult make then the trend pattern is some um, tuxedo striped cigarette pants I can't wear this these sort of trousers I look like an egg on legs but if you've got the right shape for them then I think they look super stylish really chic then the retro style dress is a bit of a kind of uh, a real like a special dress a real party piece it would make a beautiful bridesmaid dress or even a wedding dress I think there's a lot of work in this I'm not I love the color of the fabric that they've used but I think that it maybe cheapens it a little bit it it, it looks a little bit too sort of lame fabric I can see where they're going with the originals it's nice to see the original sketches then there's a little sewing lesson showing you how to construct the lining at event that's quite helpful I've never done that I'm quite interested in knowing little tips and tricks for attaching linings because I kind of worked out the main principles of adding linings but I don't really know how to bag them out and finish them at the bottom the coat that I'm making for Ian actually has a half lining and I would like to extend it to a full lining but I don't know again how to finish the hem at the bottom because you kind of pleat it um, and the sleeve hems I don't know how to finish those then we've got a fitted blazer. I mean, Berda seem to make, they seem to put in a fitted blazer in every edition and this one is quite nice, but I don't really see how it massively varies from the previous ones they've done. But maybe that's me talking because I just wouldn't wear a blazer. If I was still working in an, in an office, I probably would. And we've got a pretty sort of tea dress style dress with underbust gathers and I really like the side slit and I love the boots that she's wearing although I'd never wear them you know I'd never have anywhere to wear them to then we've got the the top with the buttons that I mentioned and they have then we've got the top with the buttons that I mentioned and they've made it in a plain color and it does look absolutely really cool 
they've used like tiny gold buttons but I imagine making those rouleau loops I think there's like six or seven on each side would be a bit fiddly and they've got a velvet top which I don't really like the fabric choice the top is okay it's got a bit of an interesting neckline and we've got a lovely coat, really nice coat this. I'd definitely consider making that. I think it would be hard. I love a funnel neck, I love an asymmetric closure and it's got a sort of skirt on it, which I've said before I do like in coats. Oh yeah, here's the pin tuck dress. They've made it in, looks like tensile or something. Oh no, it's polyester satin. Um, looks really nice you can see the details a bit more I'm not sure with pin tucks I think I might prefer them slightly closer together but I think this dress would be a good kind of um, good one to start out on and actually I suppose what you could do is you could it looks like there's seven you could do them closer together and maybe do kind of nine or eleven just add a few more then we've got a top with an asymmetric neck tie very birder um it looks really lovely on the model i imagine on me it would sort of drag and you know i, I think these things often like i love pussy bow blouse pussy bow blouses but on me they always kind of drag the neckline and turn out the, the top of them and don't look as good as they do you know in on, in, in pictures Oh, I forgot to tell you, by the way, I'm wearing my I Am Lion sweatshirt that I made in a really cheap jersey last year from Textile Centre. I've worn this jumper to death. I got it out for winter and, you know, it, it's definitely not going to withstand a lot more washes and wears because I've worn it so much. And also, I've also noticed I haven't, I, I was so keen to wear it that it's actually still got the basting stitches in the shoulders for the gathers. Very naughty of me. Then we've got one that they describe as a kimono blouse, but it's not really anything like a kimono. I mean, it hasn't even got grown on sleeves. The sleeves are set in. A, a Far East tr traditional look meets the West here, combining slightly cropped and generously flared sleeves with the backdrop of a vivid embroidered viscose is the best of both. Um, it's okay as a sort of robe top I think it's not really very exciting Ooh, we've got the skirt the bias cut skirt made up in a different fabric and it does look quite cool here the way that they've got it it looks like what I thought was an extra panel uh, is actually like a tie sewn in over the top I'm not sure anyway it looks good I really like this uh, the style of this shoot we got a sewing lesson for the blazer, which is good because it, it looks like it's quite difficult. Double welt pockets. Now, look at this style. It is so 70s and it's so cool. This skirt is gorgeous. I just need to find the right zipper for it. It's got these enormous pockets and it looks really easy to sew. And I've actually got some yellow cord exactly that colour and I think it would look so lovely I'm definitely going to sew that up then we've got the hoodie which is actually the hoodie that was in the first picture made up in teddy bear fabric and then made it up in quilted fabric and it looks really really cool I really like it because you do see some nice quilted fabric around and I'm never sure quite what to make in it anyway I like that then we've got the joggers again which they've made up in some sort of alpine sweat in it and they look nice on her but would look bad on me then the very simple dress again which looks very nice in like a nice blue with a roll neck underneath it and then again they've got that sweat that coat that I that jacket that I didn't really like earlier on when they'd made it up in sort of gray wool but they've made it up in this really cool twill 
with kind of D rings on the sleeves and I think that looks so different. Oh God, look at her sunglasses, I love them. Stella McCartney. And then the big sweater with buttons down the back, they've made it up as a sweater dress and I, I just think I definitely want to sew that. I think it looks so nice and snuggly and like a cocoon and I don't wear leggings much but it is the sort of thing I would occasionally wear around the house or out and about actually. It just looks really nice, like that looks like a really nice Christmas day dress. Christmas Day for us is kind of like a like a Sunday, you know, we go for a walk in Camden, we go to the cinema and we eat a lovely dinner that is all kind of pre-prepared and just basically relax and veg out to the maximum level. So that looks like a jumper that would hide a lot of Christmas dinner under it. Then we've got the frill shirt again, which they have made in a light shirting with like a contrast detail, but it looks really nice so you can, when you can see the details a lot better. But it looks like it might be a bit of a bit of an advanced sew. It's got, I've never done a, an enclosed shirt pack, placket like that, like a covered button placket. Then we've got the jacket made up again in like a check fabric which looks good, it looks really stylish the way she's wearing it with the pleated skirt and sneakers. And then oh my god, moon boots, a really nice funnel neck sweater that is again something that I would really like to sew up. I'm going to have to do a massive tracing session I think. I've got quite a few fabrics that would look lovely in this um, just for sort of jumpers to wear around the house or to wear underneath things. It's easier even than a frayer because the neck is grown on. Then we've got the um, extended size range and Dee commented on my last birder video that why do they have to have the size ranges separate and I think yeah I'd never thought about that before but it's so right like it must be really frustrating, you know, if you're in the extended size range, you have to buy the whole magazine for a, a minority of patterns and you're looking at all the other patterns and they're not available. And the thing is with Birda is what they're really doing is quite sneaky really, is they do often make the garments or pattern the garments in both si in a, in the full size range, but they just release them separately. And I think it's just to give them extra bang for their buck so they can release every pattern twice and that means that if you're in the larger size range you're paying for a lot more patterns that aren't available to you at that time so yeah I I think with the whole sizing thing it's it's very outdated to be separating the size ranges isn't it they I mean birder are quite quite dated really in their approach anyway you can tell in some of the copy that they write um so first of all we've got a round neck tunic blouse which she's wearing as a dress which looks really really nice it looks really sexy but only because she's made it up in a sort of fabric uh like a, a glamorous sparkle fabric i think it's actually a really plain pattern but it does look really stylish then we've got some trousers, wide leg trousers, which are quite a little bit boring. I mean, this is a party shoot and actually the jumper that she's wearing, which is ready to wear, is more exciting than any of the birder patterns. Then we've got the tunic blouse again, which, I don't know, looks pretty every day. Then we've got a dress, which I'm sure is the dress from, I'm sure it's the dress that was in the last issue with the waist shaping very similar dress but it's got side panels and bust starts so a lot of shaping there and waist shaping which to me looks a bit too low on the model very nice jacket with a funnel neck which she's wearing with it, the funnel neck folded backwards and I've never seen that before it's quite an interesting way to wear a jacket She's made it out of satin though. 
Then we've got the elongated version of the jacket, which looks more like a sort of coat, like an occasion coat. It looks really cool. Um, that fabric makes it look a bit mother of the bride, but oh wow, it's got a massive pleat in the back. That, I didn't expect that. I think that's really cool. Then the shirt, another one of these bird of ties on the bottom, which I don't really think adds anything to it, but hey. And then that is the end of this edition. I think it's a bit disappointing for the plus sizes there. I don't think there was very much on offer for them there. Next, the next edition, I really like this dress already, especially if it's in Jersey. I really like the look of that. So that is December Birder. Please let me know what you thought of it, which patterns you would consider sewing, which patterns you like, which patterns you don't like, what was your overall vibe from it. And that's all for me today. I hope you've enjoyed having a browse through with me and I shall see you very soon. Lots of love from Camden. Bye.